In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. Every step I'm going to cover. Check out the chapters below so you can go right to the section that you need to look at or watch the whole playlist if you want to be crazy like me and do all this work. I created this video to help people like me achieve their dreams. This is, to me, this is a dream. That looks so sweet. Oh, how a simple, seemingly innocent project can turn into something quite different. So, we'll call this Project Monte Carlo. I redid my entire engine, all aluminum. I redid all my pulley system, updated some stuff, and went to a car show, and some guy had to make a wisecrack about he didn't like my interior. And this is pretty much the result of what happened from there. So first, I ripped out entire interior, rewired the entire sub-dash over here. I rubberized my door panels, streamlined all my wiring, got it all laid out. And when I got in there, of course, I found some of this here. This is definitely not going to get much better over the years. Not bad for a car with T-tops after about 35 years still so i got two floor pans we're going to be replacing that with and i was going to do a custom installation interior by a professional shop so i sent out four estimate re requests and of course i got one back and he said he'll call me back and that call never came so that's about average i guess in today's marketplace so that turned into me buying a new grand national upholstery kit and i'm going to be redoing it myself dyeing and painting all the interior to match the seats which are going to be gray with black stripe and i have a red matt dss striping on the interior so it's going to be basically a black interior with gray and red striping black carpet i already got t-tops are getting redone everything this thing is getting new everything <laughs> and here we are with the interior everything removed and like i said i'm removing everything and redoing the entire interior which was a fun project but then I started looking into the wiring. The alarm was tied into everything in the world. The power windows were slow, so I had to take that module out because it was dragging the motors, making them go real slow. Of course, the vents started falling apart. Uh, the radio started acting up. That thing was misbehaving. Some of the lighting system never worked properly. The underdash lights were short. Um, the RCA cables got in my way because I had to do some metal work on the floor pan. I mean, everything just led into another thing. This whole freaking thing just turned into a whole shitstorm of work. So basically, this is what I'm going to be doing a pretty detailed review, I guess. So if you're in a situation like this and you're pulling your whole dash out to try to redo it, and as usual, you start one thing and it creates something else because that's just the way old cars are. I should have known better. So I'm going to start in one spot, even though it's almost impossible because everything is tied into everything and i've been ripping out wires pretty much the whole morning and stuff all over the place i mean this kind of looks tidy let me tell you it's it's anything but now i gotta trace all this stuff this is gonna be a fun project so i said you know what maybe something good can actually come out of this and i'll do a video about it so at least i'll have something to document and help the next guy out i know i ranted a little quickly there sorry but this car's got power everything, power windows, locks, T-tops, you name it. Um, here's the fuse panel, which I removed the back side from the factory dash portion. Uh, the lights there. I know I talked about it, but there's LED neon in here, which I'm going to use and upgrade in my console, my new interior rebuilt. Um, there's the stereo harness, a preamps for everything. Over there is an old APS, I think it's an old APS 7... 775 or 785 alarm remote start that's in there that's going to get rewired the power windows motor right like i said i pulled that out because that was totally killing my window speed that was a major no-no um i mean this whole thing basically i'm rewiring the whole car Ooh, fun slowly but surely the torture continues i got about i even had a power antenna here's the wires for that cleaning up everything little at a time here's the old headliner this is going away this might be quick i think <laughs> t 
tonight. It's one of those first long nights, I should say, of just just working on just staying busy, trying to get some stuff on this project done today. So right there, you get the uh, two floor pans. I'm going to be cutting those out and installing those on Sunday. And shortly after that, once I get that mess cleaned up on the inside, which I'll show you in a sec, I'm going to get that carpet laid in there so I can finally sit in there comfortably while I can work on the interior. And there's a whole bunch of mess of the old interior. And in today's mail, look at this beautiful interior. This beautiful two-tone Grand National interior, which I'm going to put and retrofit in my Monty SS interior. It's going to fit perfectly. I'm going to take out the old stuff, sell that on eBay, because this stuff is going for stupid money. You can't believe. This stuff here I got for just under a 1000 bucks, and I got the headrest without the Grand National insignia. I'm going to have those embroidered SS myself on my own. And the kit that you see here includes the, the top seats, top and bottoms in the front too, plus the rear top and bottom. Right there, what you see, plus the upper half of the door panels, these guys right here, I got those in gray because to replicate this in gray would just be a horror show. So I got those for around 300 bucks, I believe they were. So those will be going in there. And I'll respray and recarpet the lower door panels, of course. And this interior just took on a whole new life. Man, it's looking great. Nice and clean. Getting there. Oh. Looks a whole lot better than it did the other day, believe me. And <laughs> I mean, the inner piece of my glove box, and I'm just doing some filling work to make this thing perfect. I'm going to respray it because I just, to buy this aftermarket, I wouldn't even want aftermarket. I want a factory part, and I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on something I can easily make perfect myself with some Bondo and some paint. So that's happening. This here is another Prestige alarm, which I took the harness because the colors match to upgrade and update my current alarm that's in there now. Get that thing working up to spec before I put the dash back on there. Here's my Bondo that I'm using for the dash. Blazing putty for the top to make it all perfect and anything else I find in the interior panels to make it smooth. This is what I'm going to be using because I'm going to do a no weld type of floor pan installation where you cut it out. You grind it metal to metal and this 3M product is a panel bond you put on there. It's beautiful. You put it on there, you undercoat the bottom side, and you get a tremendous job for your money. So I'm doing that. All the LEDs for the interior. I, I ripped out all the old stuff and I got these new beautiful LEDs. These are hyper white. They look really nice in there. Such a tremendous difference, especially on the instrument cluster. Super cheap on eBay. But man, what a tremendous difference. Really excited about these stupid bulbs to get me excited. Go figure. Over here, I've already done my headliner, which is right there. It's beautiful. Look, check this out. Nice suede. Super nice upgrade. Loving, loving that. I'm also modifying the interior to upgrade it. I'm adding the center console, beefing it up so it's continuous down the bottom. Doing an audio upgrade, I'm going to put a full double den in there and relocate the components for the heat and AC down below. Floor pans left and right for the rear because this car has T-tops which leak like pretty much every GM. Those are going in there. There's a carpet. All these panels here are all getting sprayed. All this stuff here. Um, also, my main dash right here. This, this piece here, when I took that out, that's going to need a little bit of bondo, not too bad. There was one screw that really just gave me a hell of a time. It was a son of a bitch to get out. So I kind of had to muscle that thing out. So I'll bondo and feather fill that, fill it up in there. Door panels are getting swapped out. I mean, this, this car's interior is going to be so wheat. So I'm going to get some more of these here trophies. Like we used to back in the day. Man, I should have done this a long time ago, but it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of fun, so... Stick around and enjoy. I'll have some captions at the bottom so you can see which part of this job which you're interested in. You can jump right to it and do what applies to you because I don't think anybody's going to do all of this. Nobody that's sane anyway. Just me. The 
new floor pans are installed. Beautiful. So just gotta let that 3M weld dry up for about a few hours. I'll have lunch, have a couple beers, and relax. I'll come on back. Now we can start doing the fun stuff, I'm like putting a new interior in there, the carpet. That's gonna be cool. But in the meantime, while that's drying up, I'll seal up all these little nooks and crannies. Reinstall some of the insulation where I know it's missing. I'll be moving on, man, with this project. Next step is to install the carpet. So over there is my new carpet. And you'll notice that it has the absence of holes where the old carpet used to match up to. I should have known better and I should have matched up my old carpet and use it as a template. But since I don't have the template here, I'm just gonna take my time and install it slowly and carefully. So learn from my mistakes. I went to Joanne Crafts and I bought the foam to insulate and fill in the seats. I got this one inch and I got the half inch. And it looks like this one inch is gonna be the move. Now forgive me if you're a professional interior upholsterer, it's gonna be very clear that I am not. I'm more just like a really eager do-it-yourselfer that just wants to save a few grand. So the one piece is in there. I just basically measured between the seam here and here. And that's gonna give me about, about three quarters of an inch. And when I do the back, my plan is it's gonna fill the whole thing. Then I'm just gonna tack it in there with some either contact cement that I'm gonna brush on or spray glue, zip up the seat and move on to the next piece. That's the plan anyway. So I'm gonna test fit this front seat. This here is for the passenger seats for the front. You can see I got quite a bit of air here. So I'm gonna use one inch foam. I'm gonna stuff the front and the back. You can see it looks kind of wrinkly. So I'm gonna do a, a one inch pad in the back, another one in the front. This right here, I got my measurements. So I'm gonna start working on that. While I'm doing this, I got my glove box all filled and painted in the matte black. So that way that's gonna look factory perfect fresh. And I put that back in there. Got that super important fan so I don't melt out here, this heat. Let's get it. So after the test fit, the front is perfect in between those two cushions, which kind of like pop out on each side. But this piece here in the back, cutting it the same width, you can see that there is a problem here. This does not look good. So this one here, I have to cut a little bit wider. I'll have to remember that for the other half. And that will fill that whole space in. Then I can zip this thing up and it should look pretty much perfect. Here's the top half of the passenger seat completely done. Front, back, look at that. Not a wrinkle in sight. Nice and clean. With the help of my son to pull that zipper tight, that sucker is in as snug as a bug in a rug. Now I'm on to the bottom half. And this here I'm using the half inch foam, not the one inch, I'm just using the half. And I, I spray glued the back of the foam and the seat, I let them tack up. And I just started in the middle, work my way out. Once that's nice and kind of like cured, I'm gonna take a razor, trim that out. Then I'm gonna start putting on the seat cover. So today's a new day and I've got my plastic interior panels marked up and organized pretty much. I'm gonna be finishing up the other front seat. And while I'm letting some of the um, sealer on that seat dry up, I'm doing some of this insulation on the inner side of the main dash panel. See this insulation area right here, little extra pieces. I'm gonna put all that stuff to good use. And here's the other pieces that I already glued together, all the insulation, got everything pretty much as organized and neat as I possibly can get it. So my goal today is just to get the seats completed. That would be awesome. So now I'm up to the part where I'm gonna have to mount up these onto these seats. So on the left side, that was an easy one, just one bolt and I let that kind of hold the whole seat together but I got something propped up on the back of the seat to keep it in this 90 degree position. And I just kind of use this, lined it up and you just want to feel it with your fingers and you can feel those holes and make sure they line up right. I just took a hook tool like that, propped it in there and just made this ever so slight cut with a razor knife, open the hole up so I can get these bolts in there. Once you get those in there, you start tightening them down, you're home free. This is the beginning of the driver's seat now. So you see you got that piece of one inch foam laying in the middle of the front seat. And on the back, I'm gonna do the same thing, except it's gonna be a one inch strip that's gonna cover the entire back because that's what the seat needs to fit 
the new forms of the seat covers. They look good on the other one. And it's a good thing I started with the passenger because that's usually the way you should do it because you don't want to screw up the driver's wall and you're going to see every day. If you got to make a small mistake, make it on a seat, you ain't going to see too much. This one here is all done. I got the rubberized undercoating on the underside there, all painted up, looking good, bolted in there. Just got to get the um, plastic pieces that's going to cover that. I got them over here waiting to roll out. So I got those with some enamel gloss black on there. There's the top half, bottom half. And these are the pieces that slide through the top for the headrest covers. That'll be the last piece. That's it. Right now it's a dry. I just got the top and bottom of the back seat. I put some uh, spray sealer on the foam to keep the dust down before I put the uh, foam and pad them and put the new covers on these. So I'll let those just chill for a little while while I'm working on the fronts. Here's how my driver's side seat is coming along. There's the front. Bottom's done on the back side down there. And over here we got the beginnings of the bottom half of the front driver's seat. So I'll be trimming that out and then I'm gonna take another half inch piece. I'm gonna line the center up with that. Trim it up with the X-Acto knife. I'm gonna start reupholstering it. So here's the bottom of the driver's seat and I got right here I have a one inch piece which is covering the entire area. And then I did a second layer of another half inch just down the center just to keep that nice and puffy to match the other side and that's gonna look so nice once that's all upholstered in there so that'll keep that seat together for shoot another 35 years now we got one front seat completely done painted bottom top headrests which i just got i special ordered these to be blank because i want them to embroider ss at a shop after the fact because the stock kit that came with it had the grand national turbo icon which I didn't want the only thing was there was no slit cut out so I cut that out and buttoned it up that I could figure out that wasn't too hard from my experience of doing the last one a few years back and that's it look at that loving that now we start the bottom seats of the rear yay all the seats are now done there's the two fronts headrests are already in there Got the little cutouts for them to slide into, and those will go out to get embroidered. Both will say SS when this is really done in the car. There's the back seat, the bottom half, the top half. Now we can start doing the rear deck and upholstering the side sail panels and the rear deck lid. There is the old deck lid, big deck lid, <laughs> super sport. It's this thing is gigantic. These are the grills for my 6x9s, so I'm going to cut those out. I'm gonna lay them in there and it'll be gray on the outside and black inset so that'll match some of the interior. I think that'll add a little flair to the customness of the whole project. Ain't it amazing what some new carpet can bring new life into something? Especially something old like this, 35 years old. After this thing's trimmed up, shoot. This thing looks like it was 30 minutes old. Look at that. Just like new. And I could not be happier. Here's the back side of that beautiful back deck lid. So what I've done is I sprayed glue here about an inch on the other side so I can wrap it. I'll cut the corners and bend them in there just so when I install it, there won't be no squeaking or rattling in there. Even if you're kind of like an amateur doing all this here, auto upholstery, there's some tricks that you could do. Take the back of your tools, the surrounded edges. That makes a great way to make a form. Right here, like this tray, this back deck lid, look at that. Another thing is just using what God gave you, two of these hands. Just push in where you need to be. Like this here is where my gonna be my inset for my speaker grill. If you remember those, which are here. Alright, so take that. Boop. And I'm gonna cut that out, push the carpet in, and I'm gonna slight pressure fit that in there. One on the left, one on the right. And that's gonna complete my deck wood. Just take your time. It's like building art. You don't want to rush this kind of stuff, but man, is it worth it when you get done and you see how proud you are of yourself when you make something beautiful. Like we're making right here. I couldn't wait. I kind of cheated popping it one grill in there, but it's sitting there, man. It's just so beautiful, man. And man, ain't not really much to it. Just doing these things either. Just pressure fit. 
So if you ever got a blown speaker or whatever, pop that sucker out. And this is all I've done is just I pushed it out with my fingers, made the mold and it seemed kind of like where it was. I made a slit and I just kind of went, took out the chunk of the middle and just went choop, 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 made little chops. And you press all that back in there. So that way when you go down and you have a little bit of space where you cut a little bit too much and you have a little air, the carpet will fill all that stuff. So you can't go wrong. There's my finished product. There's my new deck lid from my AeroCoop. All in there, carpeted, glued down, trimmed down. Got my new removable pop-out grills from, from my rear 6x9s deck lid. Provision there for the third brake light. All nice and laid out. Beautiful. Underside, all set and ready to go. Heavy as hell with all insulation, slide right in there. Now I can start on some sail panels. Lots of other panels, judging by the where it is here car. <laughs> this right here is my existing dash panel where my heat, my AC, cigarette lighter, and radio, did in a half size radio, I should say, right here, currently resides. So this is the Clarion seven inch flip out screen, which goes in here. Now that's gonna go bye-bye. With my new interior, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this new doubled in in here and modify this whole panel and when I move the heat and AC controls and everything like that down to a lower panel with a piece that I bought to elongate my center console like you find in the old 83s and 84s it's a little flip out little pocket thing I'm going to use that for my pocket and my controls and use this exclusively for my new cool seven inch double din and here's how we're going to do it first off this here is the double din trim ring for my JVC that I'm going to be installing you can see how that fits once you put that in there, it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for much of anything else. So what I've gone and done is I took my table saw and I ripped down this piece of ABS plastic. It was about nine and a quarter by, I don't remember the other measurement, whatever it was. And that fits in there perfectly like so. Boop. Then once I put this blingy new double den in there, this is going to be my main center control viewpoint. That's pretty nice. <laughs> That's a really nice upgrade. Wow, that's gonna look smoking hot. So I'm gonna take this, press it in there, and I'm gonna use some JB Weld, some contact cement, or epoxy I should say, to keep these two together. Once that's sealed up in about five or 10 minutes, I can come back. I can take my trim ring, lay it on there, mark it out, trim out, and make my hole for my double din receiver. Then I can start mounting it in there. And this is what we're gonna have. So cool. The shot. That contact cement that I'm using, this stuff smells like ass, by the way. God, this is terrible. But I've been using it a lot, and I tell you, it has not disappointed me. It's a two-part. You mix it up, set it, and forget it. Five minutes, it's done. It's a wrap. It works really good, though. After I dremeled out all the plastic, put the doubled-in hole, put it in the sleeve, slid that beautiful new JVC doubled-in in there, and this is what you got. I'm pretty happy with that result. And the back side, which is not so pretty, but... It's good for learning stuff. There's the tabs of the double din trim ring holding it and locking it into the plastic that I created. Hot glued it. That all cemented all in there nice and snug. And that sucker ain't going nowhere. So there's that. On to the next part of the interior. Now I am up to the step where I'm gonna be putting in the center console piece, which didn't come factory equipped with my Monty, but I really like these, I've always liked them. Yeah, stick it right in here like this, and it fills between the pocket in the center console and the radio. So I got this little spot here that I'm gonna use for a pocket right here. And underneath, I'm gonna use all, all my switches for my cigarette lighter, USB, interior lights, etc. And this is going to be extra space I never had before. So I started with my Dremel, Dremel this out, and I hot glue this in from the back side and get this prepped up for paint. Here's what the rear deck lid looks like before I install it in the back of the vehicle. The grill's flushed in there, the black grill cloth and the gray acoustic carpet covering the top that was re redone. Here's the back, glued those. So they stay put, hopefully. When that base starts kicking, hopefully those things will stay put. Now we're out in the backyard. You can see I got all my seatbelts. These are my rear seatbelts. I did find a kit to do the front, so 
the back I'm going to spray just straight black. The fronts are going to have the black and gray stripes. So I got them all masked off here. The buckles for the rear with the retractors. And over here, got the long one. Again, all masked off. Cleaned up with wax and grease remover. Scuffed down so that way they will take the black paint. You're never going to see these things anyway, but they have to match. So we're doing them. The first part of the new interior in the Monty is installed. Look at this. Very exciting. There's the back deck with. Look at that. I love this. This is going to be so radical when this thing is done. Oh my gosh. I could not be more excited. Here I am. I'm up to the part where I have to prep the main dash panel here. So this whole dash pad is in basically really good shape. Except... There's a low spot here that I exposed by just sanding horizontally. You can see it's like a low spot. So I'm going to fill that. And over here, taking out one of these top 7 millimeter screws, this one just really gave me a hard time. So I cut around it and I pulled it off and I pulled it out with a vice grip later on. I figure I'll just fill it like I am with Bondo. So that's the first attempt. I'm going to put another set a bundle on top of that grind it down with about 240 grit and then i'm gonna hit it with feather fill same thing here there was a little bit of imperfection on this top of this dash panel i'll hit that with some spot putty now as well as this little indentation over here once that's all sanded down i can hit it with the sem prep primer and i can set it for paint i pulled the seat belts for the rear seat out of the tree from the done drying I had a little bit of a rainstorm, which is unexpected and kind of hairy. It was like freaking a monsoon in Indonesia is more like it. However, these things were well dried beforehand, thank goodness. And with a little bit of masking and some basic black gloss spray paint, this is what the rears came out like. Although I'm getting custom front ones with the gray and the black stripes in a kit, the rears are just, this gets basically rolled up and tucked away. And all you see in the rear is this anyway. So there's no sense in buying a whole set for that. I'll just use these as it is. I'll bolt them up before I put in the rear seats. And these things are good to go. And done cheap, which I'm all for. These lower door panels in this car, this is the old fabric that came off of down here. And you can see that's just hideous. So when I take this off and I spray this whole door panel in gray, I'm going to do gray and I'm going to do black strip on the bottom to match the bar bottom carpet. My plan is to do the bottom carpet in black and I'm going to bring some black into here to fade it up into the gray. So you can see I got this kind of like this fuzz going on here. So I'm going to take this heat gun and see what happens. Oh, it's pretty that. That'll give me something to actually hear my spray glue on when I apply my new black piece of paper to the lower half of the floor panel. After I do that, I can take a piece, slide it on there, tack it on, trim it with a knife, and that'll be that. Easy enough, right? Now I'm up to the part where I'm going to spray this fabric coating, spray paint, oddly enough, I've never done this before, on the old burgundy sail panels, because to get these upholstered is just silly. And to find them in the color that I'm using is impossible, so here goes. Here's the final product spraying on these sail panels that spray paint and you can see from the cap the color that it's supposed to be and you can see that the color it actually is and I can't say I'm totally stoked about it it's kind of crispy crispy critter there thank goodness this is not gonna be a seat I'm gonna sit on so as far as this dupla color goes on this fabric I'm not sold I might respray these with the interior paint We'll see how it matches up to the plastic panels once I match them up. But for right now, I'm not thinking this is going to be what I want. So here's the progress on the main dash panel. When I got it out and I used some Bondo to fill some of the deep cracks and some putty to just smooth it out. This is probably the third application with the spot putty. I'm going to hit it now with just a light 800 grit. And get this sand tended down with 
the sandpaper and then I'm gonna hit it with a scotch Brite pad wax and grease remover hit it with a tack rag before I start the primering process on this panel as well as all the plastic panels in the whole interior they all get shot in one big batch these are the scotch Brite pads that I'm gonna be using to prep all my panels in the plastic on the interior on the dash this is the ultra fine because you don't want it to be too hard too brush too rough but you want to get something for that primer to bite into so this here is what I'm going to be using that right there is not water or some Sprite. That's sweat from my eyebrow. I've been sanding this one here panel now about 20 minutes. Take your time. This is the most crucial step when you're painting your interior. Rush somewhere else, but don't, don't rush here. Take your time. It will be worth it take a look this is the paint that i'm going to be using for the interior i got some scotch bright pads i got a three pack of the gray the ultra fine i got some tack rags before i clean up i'm going to use my wax and grease remover which i already had from previous projects to clean the surface then you use this to get rid of any lint and dust and i got some plastic adhesion promoter which i'll spray on the panels before i attempt to put the primer on Speaking of primer, we have some flexible primer surfacer here. I got two cans of that. I don't know if I'm going to use two cans, but I got two. And I got six total of this one here, which is the classic coat. This is the color I chose. It's a light graphite. It's a nice light gray. I think that's going to look really super. And I got six cans. I know I'm not going to use all six, but I'd rather have six. What you see here, around 200 bucks, And I guarantee I'm going to return at least two, maybe three cans of this. So total... If you're figuring out how much it's going to cost you, I'd say about 150 bucks to play it safe. And that's being generous because I know I'm going to return a lot of this material. And this all came from Albert Campbell, which is a local displayer. Actually, they're nationwide, but they're here in Jacksonville, but they were everywhere. Great place to shop, by the way. Great people, very really knowledgeable, good people to do business with. After much anticipation, look what finally arrived in the mail today. My beautiful new Grand National Grey Velour door panels. So look at these things. These things are so beautiful. Nice fabric, perfectly matches the seats. Pre-cut out templates for the power window switches, which I have new, which I'm going to drop right in there. Look at that, all new. Not a mark on their new upper weather seal. Chrome trim, ready to roll. And not only that, but huge bonus. In the box were two of these sail panels, which matches, of course, the seats, the door panels. Now the rear sail panels are all going to be a matching set. I'm just going to glue the back so that way they'll be tight. But this is free. You talk about a deal. I'm loving gbodyparts.com. This website is going to get such a review later on tonight like they've never seen. Big progress day for interior Parts. I can't remember the last time I've been so freaking happy with I'm just feeling so much joy today oh. I am like a kid at Christmas upper door panels brand spanking new perfectly matches the seat and even how you touch it how the velour looks perfect 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 sail panels upper lower rear seats headrest which will be embroidered soon with the SS, just a standard old gray, medium gray, GM retrofit sun visors, but who the hell is gonna be looking at that when you got the rest of this interior, this bomb ass interior looking good. Tomorrow we paint and soon this stuff will be going in there. I am just, I, I can't even express, I am in love. In preparation of painting all this interior plastic panels, I took everything out, all the stuff that's completely sanded, prepped, scuffed hit it with some dishwashing lotion and water solution scrub them all down get any little bit of grease that i might have missed hit the back side really quick in the front and get all the crevices best i can for tomorrow before i prep it which i'll hit the wax and grease remover then a tack rag then i can start spraying the primer plastic adhesion promoter and lastly the paint then we can finally see some gray interior oh yeah there's no such thing as getting your panels that are getting ready to be painted too clean a little soap brush and soapy water this does tricks because all that grease and dust and stuff you can just can't get with a tack rag and by hand so 
I'm gonna do this, let them all get cleaned up nice, rinse them down, leave them in the driveway. Tomorrow, I'll pick them up, and then I'll start hitting them with the chemical wax and grease removers before I start laying on my paint. So I know for sure they'll be clean. There's no such thing as having a panel overly prepared for paint. Just can't happen. As part of the neon installation, what I've done is my center pocket, which I've, I've added my custom center area from the older Monte Calls 84 to my adapt to my 87. So I have this pocket that I've adapted to my new custom add-on for my Monte. And I've got this LED strip, which I've got connected here to my power supply. So I'll flick that on. You can see it's kind of got these little LEDs spaced out. So what I've done is I've matched those to the holes here on the pocket. So I'm gonna set that like that. And that's gonna address lighting up the center area of this console without seeing the LEDs. It's just gonna give you that ambient glow. So that's how that's gonna go. And I'm gonna run that tied into parallel of the rest of the neons going on in the interior. Today is paint day and there's my products I'm gonna be using. To start off, I'm going to use my plastic adhesion promoter on everything but the dash, and I'll show you why in a sec. I have the flexible primer for all the panels, and I have the classic coat, and that's the medium graphite gray that I'm going to be using for my entire interior. Tack cloths, which I'm going to be using to clean up the products after I apply the wax and grease remover, which I have right down here. That's great stuff, and that's key. And here's a southern boy for you doing an outdoor paint job. This is some kind of mock-up operation we got out here but anyway it'll work there's all my panels everything scuffed up sanded down with 320 then hit with a red scotch bright here's all my plastic panels door panels i'm gonna blow this whole thing down with my air compressor before i start shooting it's my main dash panel and i got that zip tied down you can see so that way in case the worst happens at least it'll stay put so I got that up high. And this one here, I'm not gonna be using the plastic preparation stuff because I did some Bondo work and some filling. So I feel like, if, why should I do some partial plastic prep stuff on some areas and not on others? Cause in here, I'm just gonna use a primer, shoot the color, so that way it'll be uniform. That's the key that I'm going for here. And over here, I got some pretty cool ideas. To get on some of these plastic parts, some you need to get on the edges, some you need to get on the underside, and you can't hold the stuff while you're painting it. So what I came up with is this little idea to screw them down onto this table, right? How cool is that? That'll allow me to get on top, the side, the bottom, the works. So here's the remainder of all the interior parts. That's my instrument cluster, of course. Masked off to so the hilt. my new center console addition which I'm so excited to see that thing come together so pretty much that's everything folks now we get to do the fun part and finally get that great paint applied to this interior so cool very excited Just finished the first coat of the adhesion promoter and it's real light just so you get an idea of just how light it is you can barely see it just a light speckle just a little something for that white coat to grab into so you hit this leave it a be for about five minutes then you apply a wet coat then you do the next step and that's when i lay my primer on while i'm letting all these pieces over here set up from the adhesion promoter i'm gonna start laying on my first of two coats of the primer surfacer for the dash because this one got the body work I want to just get two nice, pretty wet coats on there. And when that's done, I'll hit it with 600 grit and I'll lay the color coat on at the same time when I do all these panels out here. So I got the first coat of the paint on the panels. I'm going to do a wet coat, a second coat, and I think that's going to be more than sufficient to hide and get a good, consistent color. So I think that's going to be it for all those plastic panels. My main dash panel is beautiful and completely done. I hit it with two white coats and that looks perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now just hit these up, hopefully before this rain comes in. Now it's the fun part, I get to assemble all this cool looking stuff. Like check out this color scheme, man, that looks so freaking good. 
I just love the look of that. So this piece here, I'm just taking to replace my old burgundy carpet. I just measured from here to here and I gave myself a little overlap. So I'm gonna spray some spray glue in there. I'm gonna run this piece of black in the bottom to match my carpet to tie into the gray for the lower half of the door panel. So I'm gonna start putting that together and so on the top half and making these doors look like real doors again. Just look how nice that black ties into the gray and the black and the red and everything like that. Take a look at this. I got my first piece to preview my dash semi put together, but man, look at that. That looks freaking hot as, oh my God. I love it. This car is gonna look so wicked when this interior is all together. Anyway, let me get back to work. Stop goofing around. There's the first door panel, roughed in, looking nice. It's coming along. Check it out, second door panel's done. I don't even recognize this car anymore. That looks so damn good. Damn, that looks nice. I just wanna keep going, man. I just wanna get this interior in here. I really like the way the black offsets the carpet and comes up into this door panel just like that. It is so clean. And that handle being gone, that's a big plus. New switches, top and bottom. Looking good. After getting in here to do the door panel there, I finished up the under dash LEDs. So I got about, oh, about a cluster of six in there. I got one in the shifter. I got them under the seats. I got wires ran out for the sail panels that'll be showing up later on. Once I get those panels installed and the front should be lit up pretty nice and in the center right by the driver's and passenger seat i'll have a little little light there too so this thing's to look really nice at night see you again tomorrow mr car so this morning we're learning some important lessons about interior repair first lesson i learned is not to trust everybody you see on youtube so this one guy i watched who does a lot of interior with the sem paints he said okay well i'm gonna definitely prime and paint my dash because you know, he felt like he was doing filling work and he figured he'd need the coat between the, you know, the actual finished surface and the paint. And he even used some textured rubberized paint for like bed coating. I didn't go ahead and use that because I didn't need it. As you can see, the finish is pretty flawless. And you could also see that when you scratch test it, it's fine. It's totally fine. But here's what's not fine. This here, I used this, the plastic adhesion promoter and just sprayed two coats on there and look what's happening. And this is literally happening all over. That sucks. It's not that it's a major deal. I can just, you know, hit it, hit it all again with primer surfacer, scuff it up, spray it again. It's not a big deal, but man, what a bummer. Because I had all the stuff painted and done. I was ready to start installing it all this morning. And I seen this crap. I was like, God damn. And also on the glove box, when I went to reinstall this piece, when I put the lock in there, I screwed right through there and I used the wrong length screws so that they wound up popping through the other side. So that was another disappointment. So it is what it is. It's part of the learning experience. I mean, listen, I'm not paying a professional. There's going to be some problems. Now here's my next adventure. I got my seatbelts back from Seatbelt World, which is really cool. They got the gray and black, which match my seats. So that's pretty exciting. And then I even went ahead and sprayed my existing old ones with the black and I taped off this with a little GM. It looks really cool, right? Really retro and modern kind of. I was pretty happy about that. But when I got their stuff, I noticed that their buckles, I can find one, don't even come close to fitting in mine. I was like, damn. But if it's in theirs, of course, right? So the problem is, is that on these, I have these sleeves, which are going between the center console and the seats. And there is no way in the world these things were coming through and fitting. So what I did is I took a, um, a knife and I just made some little slits on the side so I could take this and slide it through so I can keep this factory original because I want these because otherwise you'll 
the belt. I mean, what are you going to do with this? Hanging out on the floor between your seats. You'll never find that damn thing. Impossible. So, if you're going to do what I did, and you want to paint these to match your seats, and you want the hard, rigid, you know, uprights, just put a little slit, take these, slide them through, and you can bolt them in. Not a big deal. Just saying. Another one of those things. Really quick, I forgot to mention, these are the new seatbelt kits that I bought for the front of the Monty. And this kit was $279, and you got basically the whole front area. So these will go into the back where they bolt on the tensioner. And these things are cool because they come with these little clips built into the kit. Because these old ones, they never stayed on. They suck. So I was pretty upset about having to reuse these old crappy things. But to my delight, these actually come with these little clips and screws and bolts and the washers are pre-assembled so pretty nice and the colors match perfect on the, the grand national style seats that i'm using so i'm really happy the webbing is good quality it's a nice heavy gauge you can see the sewing is really nice the finish is pretty nice i like it um, even these they look like old school aircraft style nice little shiny little chrome and some semi polished satin looks nice so overall, I am very happy with these kits. It's unfortunate that I couldn't afford to spend the money in the back, but the backs would have had to have been custom webbing and it would have cost me, believe it or not, $1,100. That's just stupid. So I said, you know what, black paint, it is. But for the front, which is what you're gonna see really on a sports car, because who the hell looks in the back seat? These are gonna look just outstanding, really nice. So I got that. Of course, I got my uprights, which will be between the console and the front seat. And I got these guys, which are gonna be coming out of the side by the seat. So these will be popping up and you'll see these beautiful customer embroidered seat belts. That's a nice touch. I think this is really gonna help set up this car. This is what kind of the stuff, the kind of stuff that makes a show car a show car. Cause it gives you something to look at and show. So I'm pretty, pretty impressed that I found these. I'm lucky I found these, I should say. So shout out to seat belt world. Cool stuff, man. Definitely like it guys. Next step in this job is I'm going to take this steering column all the accessories off of it so that way I can spray the lower portion and this higher portion here the wheel I'm just going to mask off and leave that be and I'm going to do a gloss black so these three pieces are not very intimidating at all to remove basically this tilt switch you just turn it counterclockwise and boom that's how that goes over here the cruise control switch basically this thing you just pull it Gently, just pull it until it breaks free. You can see that there's that little tab that's holding it together. There'll be an extra piece of wire there so that way you have some time to work around it. And let that just chill. And over here, this thing, just like on TV, you just take a, a, a wide headed screwdriver, just gently pry it off, and that pops right out. And that's what it looks like inside there. Easy peasy. And last but not least, is this guy right here just a Phillips screwdriver regular number actually number three would probably be better than a number two I use a number two it worked but I think a three would be better but either, anyway anywho you got the screw this little piece of plastic that holds in there a spring then you got this piece right here so you stick it in you pull it boing to shut it off and push it in to shut it off one screw and that comes off so there's one two three four now we're ready to roll start doing some painting now would be a good time to polish these parts up with some others as well get this thing looking like chrome again it used to look like chrome now it looks like crud but we'll fix that we'll put all these pieces in the bag for safekeeping so when this is all dry we can reassemble it without freaking out in a hurry looking for these parts. So there's your before. You can't wait to see the after. I'm all masked off, ready to go. I got the wheel wrapped up in basically garbage bags and frog tape. I got some bag around my cruise control and that's hanging out. And I'll get around that. Everything's scuffed up nice with 320 grit, ready to go, wax and grease remover. Let's do it. Look at how that light primer paint color brings out all these imperfections. Look at all these little fuzzies, all that kind of stuff. So I'll hit that with some 600 before we apply the color coat. 
and everything should come out just fine. So with the help of uh, an assistant, I got this new dash panel put up in there. I got the 310 mils, one, two, three connected. And I got this panel slides up in there and then those two bolts right here. When I was working on the center console and in the pocket from the 84 version with that little bumped out console piece, I noticed that the pocket that I added was not gonna happen if I left this piece from the original center console in place. So I cut this out and put some nuts and bolts, washers. I'm gonna pull this together, hot glue it in place so that way when I slide this in, the pocket should fit in there without any interruption. Slowly but surely, it's coming. So I got this piece in there. What a pain in the ass that was. I got two self-tapping screws holding that thing in there from the upside, and I dremeled out that to snug in there securely. So that way, when they butt up together, it'll look okay. And we'll see. I might put a filler piece in there. I'm not sure. We'll see how it all works out. Next, I'm going to put this head unit in here, mount that up in there. Now we got the back seat installed. Look at that. That rear deck lid, man, that looks so freaking good. That back lid and that seat and it flows so nice. Once we get that sail panel in there, boy, woo! Coming out. Next, we're gonna pop in those front seats. And start tying this whole interior back together. Look at that man that looks too damn good <laughs> it's like a dream look at that man damn all of a sudden it's starting to look like what i envisioned it to always look like look at that how beautiful is this well it's not complete but you can see what i'm seeing this looks so freaking good. And it's just gonna get better from here. God, that looks fucking nice. Hard to believe I did this all by myself. <laughs> but it is so beautiful. I am just enjoying this moment looking at it. I am a week later with all my interior panels that I have to respray, the ones that I didn't prime. And here they are. I hit them all again with this scotch Bright pad, wax and grease remover, hit them up with the uh, air hose at 100 PSI to make sure all the little dust, specks, and particles are gone. So I want to reprime all these panels with one dry coat, and then I'm going to hit them with a super wet coat. Then I'm going to lay on the color coat so that way these things will be scratch proof and I can install them in the interior, hopefully, later this weekend. There they are, my friends. My interior panels are completely painted, primed, sanded, painted, stripped, <laughs> pre-sanded, now reprimed, and painted completely. They look beautiful. Now we get the fun part of installing all these beautiful new interior panels. That's going to be the payoff. Now I'm up to the part where I'm going to reinstall the rear courtesy lights. So I've painted these black and I've got these wires stripped off. They're going to need to be extended, by the way. So... I have this kicker 18 gauge wire, which I'm gonna heat shrink and solder on there, extend that about, oh, about three feet. And instead of using these old bulb style, I'm gonna upgrade these to these Cobb 12 LEDs that I'm marked out so that way I know the position. It this will go to the orange and this will be to the white. White is negative door trigger. And I'll squeeze those in between here, replace it with this new lens, and it'll look terrific. Here's the next piece of the puzzle completed. Go to Monte Carlo interior. This is a new instrument cluster which I bought on Mike's Monty's website. And this piece here was just a blank knockout panel, so I had to put in there for my mirror control, my rear defroster. Everything else is pretty much the same except for that. You pop that in there. And over here, well, I got those sitting right here. I'm gonna hot glue those in there in a second. But man, does that thing look a lot better than an old one. So I popped that in there, epoxied it, then I hit it again with some hot glue. That sucker ain't moving. This is gonna look incredible. I went to reinstall my center console. I remembered that this needed epoxy because that just is a typical break point. And so is this. So what I opted to do is paint inside here that 
light graphite to match the rest of the interior console. And I'm gonna put some hot glue in there and I'm gonna install this panel in there, drill two holes so that way this will double secure because I have the epoxy in there on the two holes. The hot glue will hold this panel down and then from the back side, I'll drill the holes through and this will look nicer in the bottom. I actually gave it a little custom touch. One more little addition we're gonna have to the car's interior is the stock mirror, which is of course fine, but this one here is a little bit larger and it's got home link built into it. And it's auto dimming and it just looks pretty damn badass. So I'm gonna retrofit my stock GM mirror with this one right here, which is a product made by Gentex. It's got a nice little edge to it. Auto dimming so it'll be you know black when the sun is shining through the back window or you have the T-tops off, you won't have any glare. And it's got the home link, so that's a bonus. Here's the stock mirror, which is no more. Now we got this. How cool is this, huh? Oh, it is. This is the tool you need to, for the job. And it's got a built-in battery, which lasts forever for your home link. You got three channels. It's an edgeless mirror. How freaking cool does that look, huh? Literally one minute upgrade. Can't beat that, man. Even though no one else will probably ever see it's in there, I know it's in there. I do it because I love this car. And this car deserves it. It looks nice too. Now it's time to drill out these switches. I got two switches here. These are latch momentary switches and they have the little halo eyes. So this one here is gonna be like a magenta purple to match the interior underglow kit. And I have an auxiliary one, which I'm gonna to put to the left of it for future use. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for now, but I'm sure I'll find a use for it sooner or later. And then over here on the left, I'm gonna modernize this car. And on one, I'm gonna keep the retro, you know, 12 volt cigarette lighter plug with the little flip top. And my plan is to put that one right here. Then next to it, I got this really cool dual USB charger. So it has a type C on the top and a standard USB 5 volt on the bottom. So I'll have a dual USB, I'll have a 12 volt, and I'll have two auxiliary momentary switches, which will light up at night and match everything in the interior. Should look really terrific. So right now I'm just measuring it all out. I'm gonna have to drill it and I have to pull this panel so I can do the wiring in the back because these switches are a pain in the ass. Get these plugs in there. Then I have to wire it up, of course, and reassemble everything. And you can see I got the center console in there. So little by little, just taking my time. All well, my years of experience doing this stuff to people's cars, it's different somehow from when it's your own car. So I'm just taking my pilot bit and I'm just putting it right in the center of each one. So that way my unit bit, which I'm gonna use or called a step bit, if you don't know what these things are, I call me unit bit. Um, and they're nice, because they're designed for plastic and they give you nice straight round edges and they actually have little markings on their notations to show you which hole size you're going to. So one by one, start with that. And once I put this in there and start drilling, I know for sure I won't start walking because I would just destroy this beautiful paintwork I just did. These are the switches that I'm using for my accessories. And it's a pretty cool little switch. See when you hit it, it lights up and throws the power on, which is pretty cool. But the wiring of these switches, I'll tell you the description you get from the seller on Amazon is just horrific. So anyway, I figured the damn thing out after everything because I, in my mind, couldn't disassociate the status of the LED with the output of the switch for some reason. But once I broke those two and separated them and connected them independently, then I started, things started to work out the way they're supposed to. But in the end, this is how it worked out. And if you're gonna use one of these switches or if you're gonna ask me about buying one of these, basically this is the wiring and I wound up applying to the switch to make it function properly. It needs to be wired on constant so that way if I'm at a show, I can just turn the key off and I can have my LEDs running on the interior to show off and without turning the key on. That's the plan anyway. This is how the center console wound up looking like. I'd say it's pretty damn good. Almost damn near perfect. So this guy here, this is my uh, USB-R-QC, which is a dual USB charger, and it has a voltmeter in there. And that just lines up really nice. You can see here, perfect spacing for the 12-volt outlet. A little hard to open, but you can see what's going on. And this here is my purple LED switch. This is going to be my aux. That's how that turned out. And of course, 
even the best planning has a change of plans. Everything. I completely changed my mind on just about everything that happened back here. So just so you know, this here is my output for my LEDs. This one here I left with a butt connector. So in case of future, I'll have a something to connect it with. Hopefully I'll remember what the hell that means. Brown here is going to be my constant 12 volts because I want my cigarette lighter to be a constant for my phone charger. Unlike this one here, which has to be key accessory because this one has a voltmeter. And I only want that on when the key is on. So I have this I ran out. So I got four wires. Accessory, my ground, constant 12 volts, output to my LEDs, which I already have right down there ready to roll. So basically what I want to do is I'm going to put this back in its place tentatively, connect all my wiring, verify everything works good. Then I'm going to screw it, button it up together. Then I'm going to start moving ahead on the center console area and wherever else knows. Everything's operational, fully powered up. There's my old switch. There's my interior LED kit. Now you can see the flush mount LEDs that I did in the pocket there. You can really start to appreciate how this interior is starting to come together now. This part right here, literally almost all day. Crazy to look at that small amount of work to think I'm still working on it. <laughs> so the next part that we're reinstalling is the glove box. That's how that goes. So I got that carpeted material in there. And basically these two 7 mils here and it's two 732s up here, which I've connected and I pulled it out as much as I wanted, as much as I could, I should say. So that way this clips in there and my trunk release button is there. And on the back, there's a plug, which I'm going to extend. That's going to be power for the light because there's a little push button in there, which controls this 194. So that's pretty much what's going on here. So got all the top trim pieces for the T-tops all installed. Everything except for the sun visors, which I'll do late be, later on because they're pulse recovered. I don't want to get my dirty fingerprints on it. See, those look just amazing. I upgraded these to blue LEDs instead of the old school red stuff. Back in here, there's my suede, suede headliner. So I'm going to basically put these two on the side. These are the coat hooks that are going to hang it on the left and the right side. On the back, there's a piece of trim, which I'm going to hold that together. And I get sandwiched in between this T-top molding so I can install this. Then I can start doing the seat belts on here on the sail panels. I'll do the top. I'll do the bottom. Then I can reinstall my bottom seat, which is up here waiting for reinstallation. Then we can start moving back up to the front. So here's a quick tip. When I was doing this new suede headliner, I says I had these two wires over here. You can see that twisted pair of white and orange there. That I just did. That sucked doing it. I'll tell you that in a second. This here is what happens when you have pre-thought and you run the wires out and you leave yourself some room to connect your cables for your material lights. This one here, I said, oh, I'll figure it out. Bad idea. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So leave yourself plenty of cable extension because I'm running interior neons and stuff i should have known better that's just common sense right there i don't know what i was thinking but anyway make sure you leave yourself plenty of room and back here when you're doing your headliner um don't forget these two clips here that hold it here and here before you put this piece to cover it up and trim it and of course you're going to have those two hooks which i have mine over here for the coat hooks i'll be putting those in there and this slides so nicely up into this trim right in this area damn it looks good here's a quick peek here at these coat hangers and i'll tell you man i i gotta tell you i never did a headliner with this severe indentation here like this and i was concerned on maybe you were when you were watching that part of the video but man look at how nice that is this here is a serious indentation this here area just kind of like goes whoop in there just look how nice that looks that's like pff, perfection I never thought I could even achieve, but man, I'm so happy that it turned out this way. 
I can't wait to see this all finished. Ooh, it's coming. And here's a quick follow-up shot of what the front's looking like before I call it a night. One more quick tip before I get out of here for the night. I want to say that this here is the plug that connects to the back of the, um, the sub dash where the instrument cluster connects all the wiring connections. So all these things here, I had to pry out and I gave some uh, light sanding with 320 grit just to make good connection. And I actually replaced the entire instrument panel um, ribbon cane, ribbon panel, like ribbon, ribbon, I don't know what the hell you call that thing, the ribbon thing in the back of the instrument clusters to make a good, con good connection. But when I did pull it apart, I have to say I did make a crack and I pulled it apart like an animal and then I forgot about it and then I struggled with it trying to put it back together and I said, uh, what, have I, what have I done? Don't do that. Learn from my mistakes. I've epoxied all this stuff back and I actually took this, I put it in there and I put a couple pieces of epoxy here and there so that way when I put the sub dash back in there, it should click in there and it should connect and align like the factory intended. So I just wanted to mention that because this was a real pain point. I actually had this entire installation of doing a sub dash and the installation of basically all this. I mean, the custom stuff was fun compared to this old factory crap. Man, take it from me. Here's that ribbon that I replaced. Well, I'm going to replace. I haven't got it in the mail yet. But you can see that this thing here just kind of got weird. One of them cracked off entirely. This one here I tried to add some solder on to. I just think that this thing's just, just plain old old. Just old. It's just old. That's it. This time has come, so I'm going to replace this one out. And when it does, I'll reassemble, sand, clean it up real nice and pretty, and put it all back together and get this thing looking the way it deserves to look. Here's a little sneak preview what the LEDs look like in the car. A little sneak preview here. Let's see what these lights are looking like. Now the ones under the seats, they're not mounted, or the ones back there yet. I know we just got the fronts. Look how cool that looks. That's neat looking. I like that stuff. That's neat. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Man, that purple looks so nice on that light gray and black. But, whew. Okay, show's over. So today, before I can put in my front seat belts, I have to put in the assembly in that back sail panel. But unfortunately, this piece on the inner side of the door jam has to be corrected and perfected before I can do all of that. So I said, let me do some rubberized undercoating in certain areas, make that look perfect, get it all polished up, looking good. I also wanted to straighten out this door. It was slightly off on the top, so I'm gonna fix that. And once that's all done, then I'm gonna start putting this rear sail panel and the front seat belts together. And I got my front quarter pieces all filled in there. Did some touch up work. I mean, you can see it's really starting to come together. Just a whole lot of work. Take a look at how these Grand National rear sail panels look in the Monte Carlo. Perfect, perfection. And in there, I got my little LED light. So when I turn on the light switch, they're gonna glow through the seat belt and shoot all the way up to the headliner. That's gonna look sweet. Just wait and check that out. I'm finishing up the instrument cluster and on the back, this ribbon cable was destroyed on my old one. It gave me a lot of trouble. This was falling apart and it was small tears all over it. So I went ahead and I replaced it with this whole new one here. And some of these little things, when you take them out, they don't go back in perfectly. As you can see, they're a little wiggly. So I'm gonna take my soldering gun and I'm gonna drop some solder on these points right here to make sure that I get good connection on these four center conductors on these gauges. Then I'm gonna reinstall it in the vehicle. This is the way it's supposed to look. My old one was all mangled and f flattened out and just crusty. So this will be much needed upgrade for this car. Always it'll be reliable. That's super good, very important. On these door jams where I'm trying to make them perfectly nice flat black with the rubberized undercoating, when I filled in some of the spots with caulk, you can see it kind of doesn't look so perfect. So I came up with an ingenious idea. I'm taking play sand, I spray the rubberized undercoating on there, and I throw it on there super quick, and then I hit it with a top coat, and I make a nice sand finished rubberized top coat, which actually looks pretty damn good. I'll show you how it looks perfected, 
and applied in about one second. Hang on. I just got done throwing some sand on the panel, as you can see right there. It's kind of like putting it upon my hand. I kind of like did, you know, flicked it on there a few feet away to give it this kind of texture. I'll let that set for a minute, then I'll hit it again with the rubberized undercoating. This is what I'm using. There's another one that has texturized element built into it and I probably would be better off using that but this is what I have I have two cases of it so this is what I'll be using today I also have this compressor which I can use this air to knock down the texture a little bit it's a little too thick in certain areas I understand a lot of you guys are not going to go through these pains that I'm going through on this particular car. Every car is different. I totally get that. But this is what I wound up getting with the texturized undercoat that I was using. And that place sand right there. And a little creativity. And you can really come up with some pretty ingenious little ways of making your car perfect. Here's a shot before I button up the instrument cluster. I got bezel in there all the new light bulbs which these hyper leds eight little leds in each one super bright look nice like it's hard to tell it's daytime but they're like a pure white because everything else in this vehicle is like this you know awesome led you know purple and futuristic looking i figured let me get get rid of all these old yellow looking bulbs we'll see how it looks not that i really drive the car at night anyway but they're in there. This was a pain to put that thing in there. <laughs> so now all I gotta do is put in this new shiny new cover. This is brand spanking new. I was able to find this at Mike's Monty's on eBay. Or this is gonna be so sweet. Look at that. No wear from all the years of pulling on and off that switch. This is all nice and new. All the gauges, the striping, the ABS plastic, not a scratch on it. Can't wait to see that thing installed. Here's what those LEDs look like. I forgot, I, they come on automatically when I start the vehicle. Bright. So there she is. The instrument cluster is completely intact. New cover installed. Matching, looking so good. Today, I'm working on the rear sail panels. Actually, I'm gonna do it one day today, one tomorrow, because this thing took a lot longer than I had anticipated. With that seat belt, that's a whole nother story. So if anybody gets aftermarket seat belts and does this fancy webbing deal, let me know, because I could tell you about some things you probably never thought of but the panel is all in there i'll tell you man that thing took me forever right here just took me about four hours i can't see how the hell i spent four hours here but i did <laughs> first you're doing the bottom piece then you want to put in the top of course you have to remove this top trim in order to get this whole thing back in together then you have this long strip out here in the front and you have that chrome door sill which goes in last so it's a five-step deal of course you have to leave out the seat in order to do it the top half was removed i put it back in there you want the top and the bottom half of the seat removed because there's a screw down there one over there another one up there and of course the one on the top and that seat belt which i have to tighten down tomorrow we'll do the other side real quick take a look at these new seat belts how they look by the way even though they're a pain in the ass this webbing looks so freaking nice all brand new look at that nice 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 Everything, even a nice little tag, just like this car was brand new 35 years ago, man. Loving that. Over here is the new buckles. So I basically just resprayed the old plastic encasements. And inserted their new parts. Too shabby. I do like that. I'm getting close. I think tomorrow I'm going to wrap up this interior finally. I got that rear quarter panel, sail panel. That's all buttoned up. Just got to slide in the bottom of the bottom seat. 
Seat belts are done with all the new webbing. I just have to mount that bottom piece like I've done over here on this side. Do that on the driver's side. A um, couple little pieces of hardware on the bottom of the seat. Just the linkage so the seat travels back and forth better a little bit. We're going to be having a conclusion video soon. The last pieces of this interior for this Monte Carlo. The two door panels, which need to be redone. Actually, I forgot to do them when I batched out the whole interior, the door. So I reprimed those, sanded them, color coded them, sanded them again with a 600 grit, like the gray pad. Then I hit them again with another color coat and another dusting coat just to make a nice texture. Of course, the armrest will take a lot of beating, so you want to give those a little extra if you can. These are some things I just added on for the um, center console. I'll show you how those worked out. That's another story. And these pieces. These things take a ton of abuse and while i was at it i color matched the screws and you know, the led recess that i have put in there for the alarm and stuff so i'll let this thing set up and dry up and once i do this i can go home i got some pre-cut window film which i'm going to put on the front doors and i can finally do that because the power window switches of course are in the door panels which holds this up but now we are ready to go this is just for the two front doors because the rest of the vehicle is excellent there's no need to mess with it so this here I got on eBay for 17 bucks. They ship it to you. I mean, you can't beat that. Look at that. The edges are even rounded off. Beautiful. 20% charcoal, just like I need on the rest of the car. So here's how this works. These are the tools of the trade. You're going to need a razor blade, some paper towels, some Windex with ammonia. Also, some of this here steel wool. So what you want to do is you want to hit the window with a glass blade clean it and you can kind of see the glue and the residue and stuff like that but sometimes you can't see it always all the time so when you rub the steel wool you'd be surprised what you what you can find because your fingers are really the best judge to find the impurities in the window and if you really want to get crazy like i did take an led flashlight feed it on that side and you will see everything every little hair every little microscopic piece of dust in this window and you want this to be perfectly clear because the one piece that you miss will be the one that you will see every single time you open your door trust me on that and this shows me everything. You'll see the glue because it'll look like a white smudge. It'll be kind of tacky and gummy. You want all that stuff gone. Preparation is the most important part of tenting a car. One more quick tip before I apply this film onto this glass, which is going to look like this when it's done. That's 20% charcoal. Three dots of you know dishwashing detergent. Put that in there. The rest with water. And that's all you need. You don't have to get crazy with the soap. Just enough just to keep it greasy. And no more diligently and quick so have this stuff ready you want to cover that whole window top to bottom in soapy water and you want to grab this tint peel it back make sure you're using the right side obviously and gently hold it nice and taut so that way it doesn't have any creases and lay it on the window and start squeezing them from the middle out just like when you do a cell phone protective cover here you want to make sure that you have the tint side of plastic and as you pull it off then you can spray the whole sheet down with soapy water and take this and move it over to the car. And that's the adhesive side right there. So I actually have this paper orientated upside down. So I wanna flip this over, and then I wanna peel this layer off of the tint. So that way the adhesive side is facing up to me, hit it with the soapy solution, boom, it goes onto the door. Protective paper, I just wanna gently pull it off. As you pull it back, hit it with some of the soapy water until the whole piece is done. Then you move the sheet over. Place your sheet, start in the middle and work it around. Once you get a little bit of time to work with it while it's got pretty symmetrical, then you can start your squeegeeing from the middle, working outwards. And if you have little fingers like this, quick ways to get rid of that is take a heat gun. You wanna apply that outside while you're using the squeegee on the inside and just work it in the outward direction until it starts to get nice and tight. And again, just let the car seal, leave the windows alone and don't open them up for about two full days. And you can enjoy those window tinting benefits for years to come. That looks so sweet. <whistles> did the new door panels with the Grand National top. The old bottom I did black on the carpet to match the bottom and make it kind of like flow up into the door panel. You can see that heat and AC controls are gone. The old 
This din and a half radio's gone. I got a flush mount double din with this new ash. All LED lit through the whole front and back side. I'll give you a look at what that looks like back there. Of course, the new back deck lid, new lights, new headliner. Everything completely painted. Light gray in the same color. Ignition switch, painted the column, all these plastic pieces, that's new, this is new, this is all new. The seats are all new, I have the custom front seatbelt kit with the webbing, you can see here, they come with the new uh, hardware, the black and gray to set off the seats, it looks so nice together. This is an absolute dream. Look at that. So there's the completed Project Monte Carlo. Three months later. Not bad for one person's labor. I've got to have... God. 450, 450 hours into this car just in this inside but man now that I'm looking at it it is so worth it